Hey guys, how are we doing? How's everybody doing? Who do we got here? Hey, Snowbird, you're always on it. <laughs> hey, Jersey Cat, Amanda1234, Nick, hi, good to see you. Hi, Amy. I'm a little late, but I'm here. Apologize for that. Um, Jersey Cat, Iris, my dear. Let's see here. Um, Katie Punky, hi, I see you, my good friend. Hello, Deborah Vintage, hello, dear. Georgette, hi, Lori Davis, hello, Tooth Fairy, and Deborah. How's everybody doing? All right, sweet pea, good to see you. Good to see everybody here. So, what a day it has been. <laughs> Let me turn this off. So, this morning, I was getting, I took the kids to school. Um, I had a doctor's appointment. Uh, yeah, it's 7 o'clock vintage. The live is at 7. Yo, this is not going to be too long of a live, but... Um, Went to take my kids to school, had a doctor's appointment. The doctor appointment was an hour away, and it was raining cats and dogs. I got about 45 minutes, and I hear thug, 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 thug. So I pulled over. I had to drive kind of slow. I pulled over to the next exit. My tire was flat. My tire was flat. So I called the insurance company and they couldn't find a tow truck who would tow the car. My Land Rover is in the shop. It has been in there for three months now because it needs a certain chip. There is a chip shortage throughout the world and so yeah I sat there for about three and a half four hours and finally I just called one of my girlfriends and had her pick me up and pick up my boys and stuff so it's been a long day but nonetheless we push through right okay enough of me crying there's more to the world. So, um, guys, I want to talk about you. I want to talk to you guys about this case. It is so, so sad. Just terrible. It's, again, it's a little five-year-old girl. Why is it always this age? Mercedes Lasoy, uh, death, girl dies after suffering abuse by mother's boyfriend. Another one. Another one. Are we surprised? It always has to do with drugs or the mother's boyfriend. Nope, Lori didn't make it to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, well. Let me show you these losers. Wait till I tell you guys about this. It's terrible. Um, they're in uh, San Antonio. Exactly, I see you. What's wrong with these weak ass women? Weak ass people, men, women, whatever. You know, it's like nothing should be more important than your kid. Wait till you guys hear what this child went through. I have family in San, my mother lives in San Antonio. 
and there's like there's a little girl she's an afghani girl who is missing in san antonio um it has like huge reward it's like 150,000 or something i plan on talking about her too and there's another little boy who um is in san antonio yeah over and over mary t it's really sad but um sorry i need to close out some of these windows here All right, so I'm going to read some. Some stuff here. Okay, so we got Katrina Min. Mendoza and her boyfriend, Jose Ruz, are arrested for the tragic death of her little daughter. Authorities have arrested Katrina Mendoza and Jose Ruz. I think it's Ruz. The couple is accused of murdering uh, Katrina, which Katrina's little daughter uh, Mercedes authorities have arrested Katrina Mendoza and Jose Ruz in Texas the couple is accused of murdering uh, little Mercedes according to the investigators the girl suffered quote weeks of torture end quote an innocent little girl was found dead in their home where she should have been protected. The police arrested Katrina and her boyfriend Jose for the for the death of her daughter of her five year old daughter who suffered several weeks of torture and abuse in Texas. Um, and this is uh, by it's a Spanish channel, but the W L b3 on this uh tweet look how cute she is guys i just cannot even believe what this little girl has to endure had in, to endure the woman's boyfriend identified as jose uh angel which is far from that that's for certain uh already uh incarcerated for several already incarcerated for a separate incident um they went ahead and charged him for a previous incident that they had uh that he had on his record and i will show you guys his record here shortly um was also charged with injury to a child resulting in great bodily harm said a san antonio police spokesman quoted to a media outlet. According to the report, the girl was taken to the emergency room at the hospital on February 5th, 2022, after her vital signs dropped. They beat the hell out of these kids, and, and then when their vital signs drop, they freak out. Idiots. And guys, this is the thing. The family, the friends, and the community tried really hard. Multiple, multiple, multiple CPS calls. After evaluating her, the doctors and nurses observed visible injuries throughout the body of the little girl who later died there. The victim's Exact cause of death will be identified when the results of the autopsy performed by the Bexar County Medical Examiner 
are revealed. A criminal complaint affidavit obtained by KENS TV, a CBS affiliate in San, Fran in San Antonio, ex uh, explained that the little girl apparently suffered, quote, weeks of torture and abuse, end quote. Family members told KENS TV that they had always noticed the injuries on Mercedes' body for as long as they could remember. So they believed her bruising and her mother uh, ne neglect began shortly after she was born. The girl had a big heart, but Katrina was angry at her. How can a mother be angry at a little face like this? Family members of Mercedes say bruises and neglect began shortly after the girl was born. Mercedes was also known for having a big and loving heart. Quote, very sweet. She loved God. She loved going to church. She loved school. She loved her little sister. End quote. Mercedes' great aunt Emily said, according to the report, the paternal side of the family said that Child Protective Services were called on Wednesday, February 9th, and said that the tragedy occurred when Mercedes and her sister were in the care of their mother. Quote, sadly to say, but we automatically knew it was something with Mercedes. Her mother was very angry at Mercedes. I don't know why, but she favored her sister, and I saw it from the beginning, Emily added. As long as the Lasoya family can remember, the little girl always had injuries on her body. Uh, hematomas, bruises all over her face and her arms and on everything, said Mercedes' paternal grandmother, Vanessa Lasoya, and added that Mercedes once had a cut on her had once had a cut to her hair with bangs uh, to cover the bruise on her face and forehead. The grandmother mentioned that uh, the abuse was uh, was where the hell am adamant began a few weeks after Mercedes was born. She had weeks to live. They said she be they said she hadn't had a hadn't had a bottle for two or three days. She hadn't she herself, Katrina, told me, I don't have a relationship with Mercedes. I can't establish a bond with her. So here is Katrina getting arrested. The Lasoya stated that they had tried to obtain custody of the little girl, but were unsuccessful. Katrina had old papers, so Child Protective Services uh, favored what she said. We all said that it will take the child's death for people to realize that Katrina is not a fit mother to those children, Emily Las Lasoya said. Mercedes uh, fam. Mercedes' father told KENS-TV that the last uh, they last saw his daughter last October. Since then, uh, her ex-partner, Katrina, uh, had not allowed him to see the girl. My son had nothing to do with what happened to my granddaughter, Vanessa Lasoya said. So um, I want to show you guys. A couple. Um, okay. Where's my stream yard? You, you guys just wait. Just wait until you hear what happened to this child. It's very disturbing.
and then we'll go over their um, criminal record. outfit to put on because they're supposed to go to A horrific case of child abuse that left a five-year-old girl dead. Her mother now arrested just hours ago. She and her boyfriend are both now charged with serious bodily injury to a child. And while we won't be sharing any graphic details, this story still comes with a warning for its sensitive nature. News 4 San Antonio's Robin Oguinye brings us more. This is 22-year-old Katrina Mendoza arrested for injury to a child. According to police documents, she, along with her boyfriend, brought her unresponsive five-year-old daughter, Mercedes Lasoya, to Southwest General Hospital Monday. Mercedes was pronounced dead less than 20 minutes after arriving. Mendoza's boyfriend, 25-year-old Jose Angel Ruiz, is also being charged with injury to a child. We have a five-year-old victim who's deceased. And like I said before, it's a very tragic situation. According to the medical examiner, the little girl appeared to have suffered extreme physical abuse and torture. We can't mention everything in the report because some details are very disturbing. Noted in that report, sections of Mercedes' hair was missing. Her body was covered from head to toe with swelling, lacerations, and bruises associated with marks you'd see from a belt. Her feet and toes had deep abrasions with missing toenails. The wounds were in different stages of healing, indicating the abuse may have gone on for a longer period of time. Also, according to the medical examiner, there is no clear or obvious injury that caused Mercedes' death and that further investigation is needed. Mercedes does have a six-year-old sister. We reached out to Child Protective Service to ask if CPS had visited this family before and where the six-year-old is now. They sent us this statement. It says, quote, CPS is jointly investigating this case with law enforcement. The family has been involved with the department before. CPS has the six-year-old sister in foster care. Detectives say after searching Ruiz's apartment and finding evidence connected to the case, it appeared the abuse may have occurred there. We visited a prior address listed for Mendoza. While there, we talked to someone related to her who said they kicked her out a while ago and she had many visits there from CPS. Don't wait till it's too late. Speak out now. Call police. You can call anonymous. You can call an emergency number. You can call the emergency number if you feel like it. Um, you can be anonymous, but this is something that can be prevented. We talked to neighbors today who told us they called the police repeatedly about violence they both heard and saw. My first report was on um, November um, after Thanksgiving um, when we first started hearing incidents. We've been hearing um, beating. Um, sounds like a fist hitting the, the hand um, for the past two weeks. I would say more like 50 or 60 hits like that. Gabriel Granado and his fiance, Gabriela Iturbe, live next door to Jose Ruiz at the Henry B. Apartments. Ruiz is the boyfriend of Katrina Mendoza, Mercedes' mother. Ruiz and Mendoza have been arrested in connection with the girl's violent death. The police say involved beatings and torture. I called police several times and I was just, and especially that last time was Saturday morning and I, um, I called the operator. So why? How many times does it take for somebody to call CPS for them to do something? How many times? I mean, you know, when you have hair yanked out from your skull and you have places shown and bruises everywhere. Why the hell would you not take the child?
Exactly. Why not take the child? This is exactly what the system is for. It seems like they end up taking the ones that don't need taken a lot of times, in my opinion. And the ones that it's like, yeah, they need taken. It's like, oh, no, you better not. And asked, I just I knew something was a little different this time. Gabriela says she witnessed a previous incident when Mendoza was physically abusive to her daughter in the apartment parking lot. She physically kicked her to the side. And of course, we called and um, and it wasn't the only time. Repeated calls did not result in the child being removed from the home. We did call the police. We did what we could. We did what we were to report. I lost faith. The neighbors tell us the abuse escalated in recent days prompting the final call to the police. They sent somebody within 15 minutes, but they didn't answer the door, so they didn't do anything. I cried. Relatives also tell us today they reached out repeatedly to both the police and Child Protective Services, but were not able to get the agencies to remove the child. It's really upsetting knowing that you tried and you couldn't do anything to change it. We reached out to both the police and CPS today to get their response to the complaints from both neighbors and relatives. They didn't respond to our interview request. Back to you, Robert. Thank you, Jim. It's a question many are now asking, could this heartbreaking death? Thank you, vet girl. You're always so kind to me. 911, only number to call. Keep calling every time. Get the adult removed from home ASAP. I'm going to pin that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Fed Girl. Listen, don't take no for an answer. If you know something is going wrong in that house, insist and keep insisting. I also think in certain circumstances that they should not have immunity, these workers, in my opinion. Have been prevented. News 4 troubleshooter Jay Avila continuing our team coverage. He's looking at whether state and local agencies should be held accountable. Jay. Well, Robert, first of all, we spoke at length with SAPD today uh, on the phone, even checked in with uh, Chief McManus. Different story from them. They searched their dispatch center and have no record they've ever responded to child abuse reports at the couple's known addresses. But uh, the couple moved around so much, uh, it's unclear right now why there's no record of those calls. Child Protective Services, though, confirms the family was in their system. CPS told me it has taken the six-year-old sister into foster care, but cannot comment further on little Mercedes's death until their investigation is further along. That will likely be 30 to 45 days. I requested an interview with Commissioner Jamie Masters, who oversees CPS at the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, but her office did not respond. Her office has presided over a troubling trend here in Bear County. We had 5,641 child. Look at this child abuse victims. 2019, 5,373. 2020, 5,499. 2021, 5,641. That's a lot of kids. That is a lot of kids of abuse victims. Wow. I think the system in place needs to be abolished and replaced instead of giving these kids sickos and paying it. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely, it absolutely needs rebuilt. Yes. Terrible. Child abuse victims in 2021, an increase for the third straight year. 
Two of the most outspoken leaders on child abuse happen to be running against each other right now for county judge, former district judge Peter Sakai and former state rep Ina Minhades. It's heart-wrenching to me because as much as we are trying to do our part to, to fund the system, to add funding, critical funding to prevention, um, and then revamp the foster care system, you know, we, we still aren't meeting the mark. We can't have caseworkers that are just dis distressed because of the underpay. We can't have caseworkers that basically are unable to keep up with the load and subsequently have turnover. Uh, that is still problematic at Child Protective Services. It's a week that has shaken the Alamo City. It's, it's, I'm sorry. It's an emotional time. This week, we reported on three separate cases of horrific child abuse. Two young children, 12-year-old Danilo Coles and 5-year-old Mercedes Lasoya, are now dead. Their siblings immediately going into CPS care. These kids have seen and experience things that none of us could even fathom. Former CASA Vice President Yolanda Valenzuela says the surviving children will need help moving forward. To be that young and to say your five-year-old sister is no longer with us, I've had to do it, and it's very difficult. CPS tells us they do provide counselors for the children taken into their custody. Valenzuela adding they will likely need it throughout their adult years. I know some kids that I had on my cases 20 years ago. Today, uh, and they're 25 years old, 27 years old, and they're still in, in counseling. Melinda Charles and Mary Beth Fisk both work with children who have experienced traumatic situations. They say any horrific experience can leave a lasting impact, so getting help is important. Kids still grow up with a lot of trauma and even PTSD. That's long lasting. Unfortunately, for some of our children, they've experienced trauma over and over again. So it's laying down layers. Layers of trauma, former state investigator Carrie Wilcoxon says, can be stopped. Do not surrender your role as a parent to your boyfriends. Embrace your role. As preach, 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 preach. Don't. Nobody will ever take care of your kids like you do. Nobody. Nobody will love your kids like you do. Especially these little thugs out there. Yes, develop health issues due to their upbringing. Yes, these children become adults. Well, if they live... They become adults. This is our replacement. This is the future. As a mother. So there's more to this story. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a lot of times because just the stress of the childhood, not only do they develop physical issues, but they hold such toxicity from their childhood that it gives them physical issues, you know, um, we're going to get to what? All right. This is a trigger warning. Hey, Black Lab. Good to see you, hon. Yes. Mercedes Lasoya was forced to put feces in mouth before death, cops say. You read and heard that right. This little girl was forced to put 
fecal matter in her mouth before she died. Unspeakable. A horribly tortured five-year-old Texas girl who died earlier this week had been forced to put dog feces and urine-soaked socks in her mouth, police say. Mercedes was pronounced dead at San Antonio Southwest General Hospital on Monday after cops said she suffered weeks of extreme physical abuse, Fox 29 reported. Her mother, Katrina, 22, and her mom's boyfriend, Jose, were both arrested and charged with the injury to a child. Look at her. No child deserves that. This bastard and her did this. How do you do that to anyone? How do you do it to a child? And how do you do it to your own flesh and blood? Police said the charges may be upgraded pending further investigations in the wake of the little girl's death. According to the arrest affidavit, Mercedes was missing chunks of her hair and several toenails. How? How? This is evil. Missing chunks of her hair and several toenails. I don't know if they took them off or if they beat them so hard or they were injured so much that her toenails came off. Can you imagine the pain this little baby went through? Oh my God, let me have him in a room for five minutes. And covered in bruises and cuts when she was brought to the hospital by her mother. Like her mother gave a shit. Her mom later told police that her boyfriend had been abusing Mercedes for three weeks. After she asked him to help discipline her daughter, officials said. That is not discipline. That will never be discipline. That's abuse. She told Officer Ruiz uh, forced Mercedes to put dog feces in her mouth as she screamed at her, authorities said. As he screamed at her. On other occasions... On another occasion, she said uh, Ruiz put a sock soaked in urine into the girl's mouth and then pulled it out so aggressively that two of her teeth came out, officials said. Mendoza also alleged that Ruiz repeatedly struck her daughter with belts and his wrist, which were covered in rings. Ruiz told that Mendoza was the one who dished out the horrific abuse, authorities said. He claimed he only slapped the little girl, quote, on the ass, end quote, and accused the victim's six-year-old sister of pulling out her hair, they said. Mercedes' sister was interviewed by police separately and gave statements that were consistent of that of her mom, police said.
Ja. Definitely a monster. This is one of the worst abuses I've heard in a while. Exactly. Evil. I mean, was there drugs involved? Was he just evil? Mental illness? I don't know. But there's no way in hell you can give an excuse for this behavior. Oh, absolutely. She, to me, she is just as big of a monster, if not even bigger, in my opinion. Because he's just a man. He's just a man. That's all. I don't even consider him a man, really. But... You put dog feces in her mouth, pulled out her toenails, put a urine-filled sock in her mouth, yanked it so hard two or three teeth fell out. Absolutely, Kelly. That's a... You know, I, I just don't ever think, especially a boyfriend, but I think um, in a blended family, it's, it's very hard for the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the spouse... Um, if they're not your kids, I just don't think you should be disciplining them. You know, it makes the it makes relationships really complicated. Then damn sure you shouldn't be touching them. Absolutely, Lori. Terrorists are treated better in our country. This was a little baby, guys. Yeah. Um, let me find something. It's just unspeakable. Absolutely unspeakable. So after she was transferred to the hospital, she was basically dead within 15 minutes of arriving in the hospital. She had scratches, cuts, she had swelling, chunks of hair missing. Her hands were bruised and swollen and what seemed to be defensive wounds. Her ears were even swollen, guys. Her neck was covered with scrapes and cuts. So I pulled up her, um, Oh, I didn't pull up, but I had someone pull up her um, record. Let's see if she has any. And I really haven't looked at it yet. Okay, so she has. Yeah, I mean, she's 22 years old.
the mother. She got on August 22nd of 2021, she got a driving while intoxicated. And that's all she has on her record. That's it. Which is enough. And I was going to Google Earth her house as well. One second. But we're going to look up his record too. Where'd that go? Bear with me. I just... I can't even. But this guy, he's got... Uh, he had some other pending charges. As well. Um, he has an assault bodily injury married, whatever that means. And that was in 1119 of 22. Um, he had no previous, uh, bank records, uh, or anything that it shows. Now she can add murder. Yep. Bingo. Um, let me see if I can find this. Okay. We're gonna watch this. Um, the the police officers they had a really I felt my heart really went out to them because of just the sheer torture, you know, of take her away and throw away the key. <laughs> Well, it's so deserving of that. You arrest the person you saw before you. Her first name is going to be Katrina, last name Mendoza, 22 years of age, SID number 1055404. This all started back on February 7th of this year. Our arrested person took her five-year-old female daughter to a local hospital because she was being unresponsive. That five-year-old victim was later pronounced deceased at that local hospital with visible injuries. At that time, officers were notified, made location, and began their investigation. Homicide detectives were notified where they worked tirelessly on this investigation and found evidence to charge the arrested person with one count of injury to a child, serious bodily injury. Uh, the arrested person's significant other was also believed to have evidence against him, and he was also charged with the same offense as the arrested person. Any questions? Can you talk about the injuries to this child? So there's visible injuries. Um, I can't go into specifics of what the injuries were. The cause of death is undetermined at this time until the medical examiner does his investigation. That's when we'll know for sure the cause of death. Um, you guys have been to the home where this child lived. What kind of evidence can you talk about? I don't have that information on me right now, in front of me, uh, so I don't have that information. So. This is um, her mother, the child's mother. The arrested person is the child's mother, yes. Okay. Has she been cooperative? What did she say when you guys talked to her? I don't have that information. can't disclose that information, more for evidence's sake. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's, this is a really tragic tragic situation. Um, we do have a five-year-old victim this season, and it's very, very tragic. 
Um, do you anticipate any other arrests? As of right now, we have two arrests already on this incident. Uh, I don't foresee another incident or another suspect at this time. But if that does occur, that's something that we will address. Do you know if Child Protective Services had ever been involved with this family? That's something that CPS will have to be notified on. That's something you can ask them. Um, I don't have that information with me. Uh, but that is part of our investigation process, is to see if there's any history uh, on these incidents with, with this victim, with these parents. Uh, that's something that is investigated, but that's a better question for CPS. And if these allegations are true, this is probably not the first time that this child has been abused. Uh, what would you say to anybody who might have seen something in the past that could help with your investigation? Unfortunately, we have a five-year-old victim who's deceased. And like I said before, it's a very tragic situation. For someone who's seeing something now, maybe doesn't want to speak because they're afraid to speak out, don't wait till it's too late. Speak out now. Call police. You can call anonymous. You can call the non-emergency number. You can call the emergency number. They like it. Um, and you can be anonymous, but this is something that can be prevented by someone who knows what's going on. So absolutely, if you know that something's going on, please speak up. Prevent a life. Prevent a, a further child to get injured. Do you know if there's any other children that they, this couple have? I don't have that information. You mentioned uh, significant other. Do you know were these two married or just dating or? I, I'm not sure on that exact information. It's just a significant other of the arrested person. Do you have any info that you can share with us on, that, on the other arrest, uh, the, uh, the uh, name, age? And Absolutely. Name. So the other arrested person, the other arrested person is going to be Jose Angel Ruiz, sit number 1030662, 25 years of age. He has already been arrested for a prior incident. Um, so this charge is going to be an additional charge to him. Uh, do you have any details on that prior incident with the charge? Uh, it's unrelated to this incident. One more question. So with the charges that are already on him, will those be upgraded? I know the affidavit mentioned something about torture of a child. If an offense changes later on, uh, that's something that happens later down the road. Right now, this is the first step in getting justice for this victim. Thank you very much, guys. Right. So I'll show you the house. Let me make sure that doesn't continue playing. Okay, so this is the house right here. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't want all that shit. Oh, crap. Hold on. Bear with me. But I don't want to. Okay, maybe I need to. But there's all kinds of when you um, zoom in really good, there's like all kinds of trash out in the backyard. So she, you can tell they clearly. Let me see if I can go out of here. You can clearly tell. It was a house, but there's, oh, thank you, honey. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yep. That's what it seems like, doesn't it? Um, it's aggravating me. I can't find it. Oh, maybe that's what I'm talking about. Wait a second. I wasn't on Google. Here we go.
Okay. This might be the house. Fifteen fifty four. Is there a house number? Yeah, fifteen fifty four. This is the house. Um, when was this taken? This was taken in just January of 2022. Um, so this is probably both of their cars. But in the back, in the very back, there is, it looks nice, you know, it looks clean from here, but there is all kinds of trash in the back. Look how the windows are all covered up. What is that in the tree? Hold on. What are those in the trees? You see those three things? Oh, crap. Okay, guys, um, something happened with my, like, the internet just went out. It's kind of storming here, so, okay, hold on. I think we got it back again. I think it might have been StreamYard. Bear with me. I'm going to try to log in back with my computer. Can you guys hear me?